Joining us now is Mark Yusko from Working at Creep Capital. Uh, Mark, it's great to have you on, and I'm going to start right there. When you have BlackRock entering the fray, and also, by the way, Citadel and Schwab and Fidelity backing EDX Markets, the crypto exchange that also launched this week, what does it signal? Look, I think it's it's great that the traditional financial services firms are coming around to the technological innovation that's been going on for the last really five, 14 years since the birth of Bitcoin, but really the last five years have been the acceleration. And and we knew that eventually the big firms would, would find their way uh, into the space. But I, I actually think it's a, a validation of, of one, the technology, and two, validation of, of business models saying that, look, this is here to stay. So this is good news and this rally has legs. Is that what you're saying? Well, I think the rally is is just beginning. You know, we we just entered the what's called the seasonal period of, of crypto summer. There's this four year cycle around something called the halving, uh, which is where the block rewards for the Bitcoin blockchain change every four years. That causes a, a period of accumulation going into that. That event will occur next April. That's called crypto summer. Then we usually get a speculative blow off after the halving event and then a, a overreaction on, on the downside to call crypto winter. So, you know, last week, uh, June 15th was kind of the, the bridge into the 10 months coming into the halving. It just happened to coincide with BlackRock announcing their ETF. And we're up, I think, uh, 14, 15% since that announcement. Um, but I think the rally is just beginning Mark, uh, over the next year. I'm just not convinced that this matters in a bold faced way. I mean, mm. it seems to me that crypto and Web3 kind of lost the narrative. This was supposed to be the future of finance and the future of, you know, technology. A lot of people, the future of commerce, a lot of people were saying. Now that narrative has moved to AI and crypto is sort of more in the metaverse bin. Why is that wrong? And does this move and others like it that we're talking about today, does that move uh, crypto and Bitcoin specifically any closer to being in charge of the narrative again? Well, I, I think I think the, the narrative's actually completely wrong. The, the idea that the digital assets are in the waste bin you know, seems kind of silly to me. We're talking about a $1.2 trillion asset from zero uh, 14 years ago, half a trillion in Bitcoin alone. Well, but we're not talking kind about... Kind of silly like, to say it's, it's we're, we're, not talking about, we're not talking about NFTs or virtual real estate in the same way anymore. People aren't trying to get by the virtual place next to Snoop Dogg's house. Like, people are concerned about actual commercial real estate right now. Well, Wouldn't no, that's, that's been the whole point all along, right? Blockchain technology is one of the four pillars of the digital age, the ABCDs, as we call them. It's AI, blockchain technology, computer chips, and data. Those four things are transforming the way we store and exchange value. The same way that media was completely disrupted by the internet and the value of the biggest media assets went to new assets, the same thing's happening in financial services. It's a long process. It doesn't happen overnight. It happens over decades. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust. And we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to eight percent of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. So, so I wonder then if it's Bitcoin and everything else, when, as an investor such as yourself in this space, and when you are talking about things like blockchain and you are talking about the ledger and you are talking also about how the asset class overall is regulated when the SEC is cracking down on so many of these tokens, but Bitcoin, at least for now, very explicitly is regulated as a commodity. Right. Well, look, Bitcoin is is digital gold. It It is taking the place of what gold did for 5,000 years, right? There's only one money in the world that's gold. Money is an asset that exists in the absence of a liability. Gold has played that role. It sits at the base layer of currency. Currency 
backed by debt created by governments to facilitate commerce, sits on top of money, gold. And for 5,000 years, gold's done a good job. But gold isn't portable and it's not divisible. Bitcoin, a permanent immutable ledger, does play that role as a base layer of new money going forward and will build the future of finance on top of that. The other things beyond that, like Ethereum or, or some of the other uh, applications of blockchain technology, may have a role. I think of Ethereum more as a, a fiat currency replacement per, per chance or okay. like CBDCs.